The end of forbearance could bring millions of delinquencies. The CARES Act went a long way toward keeping the housing market from collapsing, but things will change when the program triggered by the law ends. Under the CARES Act, homeowners could request that their loans be put in forbearance for up to 12 months. Millions of people remain out of work, but the forbearance period will end at the end of the year. Data from Black Knight revealed that 2.7 million mortgages remained in forbearance. That represents more than 5% of all mortgages. The data showed that the number declined in early February for the first time since April, but in the second half of the month, the number increased. Still, the number of loans in forbearance has been trending lower by about 2% on a month-over-month -month basis. The good news is that this number represents just a small percentage of the number of mortgages that entered delinquency in the housing market crash more than a decade ago due to the subprime mortgage crisis. Lenders have gotten stricter about handing out loans, which is more of them aren't in forbearance. It's not so much the problem associated with skyrocketing prices of the real estate, the other problem is the real estate taxes that are pushing insanity. The flippers come in and rehab some of the only affordable properties on offer and then pass on that price and tax bill to the public, banks are happy, sellers all happy, local governments also happy, when the tax bills come due however I don't see how there is not already a major crash. With the border wide open, fraudulent elections and complete lack of rule of law, the USA is not a very attractive place to park any equity. Real estate crashes if the foreclosure moratorium is lifted. If the eviction moratorium is not lifted, rental real estate will crash and, eventually, this will translate to the entire residential market crashing absent a bailout for the landlords. The quality of rental real estate will also degrade tremendously, as no landlord will be willing to perform any but health and safety maintenance. New carpet or appliances? Paint job? No. Pay the rent you owe and keep up to date and maybe we can talk about those things. Don't pay me, don't expect squat. Note, you could say a bailout for the renters, but that translates to actually paying the landlords for rent due, so the landlords get the money they're due no matter who gets the bailout. Now, if the eviction moratorium is lifted and there's no bailout, a huge supply glut will come in, as landlords kick out the renters that haven't been paying rent this whole time. The supply glut will translate to lower rents which will in turn force a lot of mom and pop landlords to sell because the rent will no longer result in a positive cash flow. Yeah, it'll crash hard in cities and suburbia, but not everywhere. Rural home and property values, places with low taxes, charm, beauty, and most importantly where you have the ability to be self-sustaining with respect to food production and other such things, will at the worst plateau, and will in some cases likely steadily go up. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. A lot of people think they own their own home, but only those without a mortgage actually own their home. A mortgage means the lender owns the home, but the lender has agreed to let you own it, if you pay the lender the money you borrowed plus interest. In most Western countries, the banks own 90% of the privately held real estate, so when a bank says the housing market is good, they are simply talking up their investments. As existing home sales tumble despite low mortgage rates, the mother of all crashes is coming on a global scale. And the Fed knows it. They are already starting QE. It's like putting a band-aid before getting cut. But it won't matter when the whole arm is going to get cut off. In fact, this wound will be fatal to financials, but we already knew this, didn't we? I'd say by the end of next year. We'll be in the storm. You already see the true health of the economy, the numbers are bad and heading lower in every sector. The Fed can't spur optimistic sentiment in consumers. They pushed it and squeezed it as far as it could go. Corporations are already getting anxiety at the thought of having a Democrat in office. Imagine we, the people. Despite historically low mortgage rates, sales have not commensurately increased. The existing home sales in the Northeast fell 2.8% to an annual rate of 690,000, a 1.5% rise from a year ago. The median price in the Northeast was $301,100, up 5.2% from September 2018. In the Midwest, existing home sales dropped 3.1% to an annual rate of 1.27 million, which is nearly equal to August 2018. 
The median price in the Midwest was $213,500, a 7.2% jump from a year ago. Existing home sales in the South decreased by 2.1% to an annual rate of $2.28 million in September, up 6.0% from a year ago. The median price in the South was $237,300, up 6.3% from one year ago. Existing home sales in the West declined 0.9% to an annual rate of $1.14 million in September, 5.6% above a year ago. The median price in the West was $403,600, up 4.5% from September 2018. There is a lack of supply because banks are sitting on inventory, and they have been doing so since the 08 crash. If they were to release the houses in their stock, it would surely bring down the market. It's supply and demand engineering. No different than the inventory car dealerships are saddled with at this time. Anyone out hunting for an affordable home today knows that the pickings are slim, and they are about to get slimmer. Housing inventory hit a record low about two years ago, but a lull in home sales over the past year helped build back much needed supply, especially in the mid-priced range. Then a sharp drop in rates this summer brought demand back and depleted that supply dramatically. National housing inventory fell 2.5% annually in September, a sharper decline than August's 1.8% decrease, according to Realtor.com. Supply has always been leanest on the low end, as investors have been very active in that price range since the foreclosure crisis. Roughly 5 million mostly entry-level homes have been turned into single-family rentals, and strong demand for those rentals means investors are unlikely to put the homes up for sale anytime soon. In addition, an unseasonably strong surge in demand at the end of summer and into this fall now has the supply of homes priced below $200,000 down 10% compared with a year ago. The demand is being fueled by lower mortgage rates. The average rate on the 30-year fix surged over 5% last November and stayed above 4.5% through March, according to Mortgage News Daily. That made for a lackluster spring housing market, traditionally the busiest time for buying. Rates then began falling in May and particularly sharply in July and August. By the start of September, the average rate was around 3.5%, and sales of both new and existing homes were surging back. Clearly, there was substantial pent-up demand from the spring. Demand also surged in the move-up market, causing supplies there to fall as well. The supply of homes priced between $200,000 and $750,000, which makes up 60% of the market, flatlined in September, after 18 months of strong inventory growth. Supply is now expected to decline in the months ahead. A large part of what is driving this downward path of the real estate market is the retirement of the boomer generation, which is only going to accelerate over the next decade. They are retiring and aging. Therefore the pursuit of promotions and things is to be replaced with a holding pattern. They have a home, and their family is all out of the house, so they do not need to seek more square feet, as a matter of fact, many are downsizing. I have a couple renting next to me, who liquidated the large house they owned, and are building one that is much smaller, one in which they will greet death. There will be no more moving up for them. Their children and grandchildren have been priced out of the bubble, which naturally occurred in their generation, and due to prices that are inflated too high and wages that have remained stagnant, they won't be signed up to keep the bubble blowing. Ray Dalio predicts somewhere between a 30 to 50% price correction, and it seems a real possibility. Things are a-changing. The population is shrinking big time. Keep building, building, and building, hoping, they'll come. When, they, don't even exist, that pipe dream will be difficult to bring to reality. Infinite growth and demand in a finite world only work so long on the matrix dwellers. Even though they want to believe 2 plus 2 equals 5, it just never is. In America, the government, coupled with a slew of builder and realtor associations control the housing narrative. Huge discrepancies exist in the cost of housing in the various markets across America, and while price variations are not uncommon, they should be seen as a reason for caution. The corrupt Fed Reserve did such a great job. We shall see what the future beholds. People now will need $70 an hour to live soon. This will end badly for many homeowners whose reach has exceeded their grasp unless the economy is reignited and that will not happen with much of the nation's workforce on the sidelines. Declining economic output will behead the McMansion market. Those living below their means will fare better. 
This might take 5 years to cool but when it does it will feel like a freeze never experienced. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.